Peter Obi, the Labour Party's presidential candidate, continued his international consultations with the diaspora on Wednesday in the United States. During a discussion with Harvard scholars and critical thinkers, the former governor of Anambra State outlined the policy priorities that will guide his administration if he is elected Nigerian president in 2023. There at the famous university's fireside, Obi described in detail what his administration will do and how our critical areas will be handled. The following are the 19 most important points made by the LP candidate in response to questions regarding governance, restructuring, corruption, security, foreign policy, subsidy, and academic staff union of universities. Here is Peter Obi's conversation on prospects of transformative governance in Nigeria at Harvard University, USA. 1. We will offer a new brand of transformative and purposeful leadership. The overall goal of my administration shall be to streamline governance, make it more responsive, transformative, effective, less transactional, and therefore efficient and cost-effective. 2. Thinking through 2023 and beyond, we must think seriously about a leadership that is imbued with competence, capacity, credibility, and commitment. Accordingly, we will pursue intangible assets of good governance, rule of law, security of lives and properties. We will ensure that we have these assets in place and stress asset optimization. We will strike a strategic balance that allows us to promote and protect national interest while meeting our ECOWAS obligations. 3. We will rebuild Nigeria's military power, promote economic growth, and enhance its technological prowess with a view to improving Nigeria's diplomatic influence in sub-regional, regional, and global affairs. Restoring leadership will require that we reassert proactively Nigeria's leadership role in African affairs through constructive engagement, peacekeeping duties, and using existing sub-regional and regional forums as well as bilateral platforms for dialogue on current and emerging challenges. We will continue to enhance our sphere of influence via peacekeeping and trade and investment initiatives. 4. We shall ensure that in moving Nigeria forward, no state or community will be left behind. Pursuant to its statutory responsibility to protect, our government will promote equity in power and resource sharing. The federating units will enjoy discernible autonomy. Resources will also be shared equitably. A higher derivation paid to oil or solid minerals producing states will not be tantamount to other states not receiving federal allocations that should keep them viable. We must transcend the rhetoric that bedevils a robust debate on some of these national questions. 5. We will respect the principles of federal character, affirmative action and gender balance, but no longer at the expense of merit. 6. We will tweak the security architecture, which will entail reform of the security sector and governance. We will restructure, re-equip and reorient the Nigerian police. This will include three-level policing, federal, state and community. 7. We will build a compact, robust and ready mobile police force with rapid response deployment capabilities and legislate the establishment of state police based on community policing. We will raise the population to police officer ratio to a higher level. 8. A properly manned, equipped and technologically driven security system with particular emphasis on refocusing the military on external threats and border protection and police on internal security threats and law enforcement, swift prosecution of criminals, bandits and terrorists, enhanced coordination among security agencies, and upholding the rule of law. 9. Integrate the activities of the national intelligence and security agencies by establishing a central reporting intelligence loop under the authority the Minister of National and Homeland Security. 10. Establish a national command and control coordination center for the efficient management of actionable intelligence, resource allocation and force deployment. Membership should consist of representatives of all security agencies on a need-to-know basis. 11. The oil theft is not petty pilfering. It is organized crime by a syndicate that involves a certain degree of sophisticated intelligence and logistical arrangement. We must admit that oil theft is happening because there is domestic and external collusion. The government and the people have the collective responsibility to protect national assets. On my watch those responsibilities will be accorded high priority. 12. Foreign and national security policy initiatives might in the long term entail rebuilding, repositioning and sustaining ECOMOG as the arrowhead of a West African security partnership. This is to counter terrorist threats and international subversion of the sovereignty of the West African region of which Nigeria must re-establish her place as a regional power. 13. We will explore ways of cushioning the forex demands by mainstreaming those components of diaspora remittances that remain opaque and informal. 14. 
we are challenged by high youth unemployment, which stands at 33.3%, 54% for the youth, and 20 million out-of-school children. We must give this country back to the Nigerian youths. Half of our 200 million people are below the age of 30. 15. Harnessing our national youth strength and demographic dividends intelligently must start with curbing the high youth unemployment and creating funding access to enable our youths become entrepreneurs and drivers of our small and medium-scale enterprises, SMEs. 16. We will have zero tolerance for corruption, block leakages and cut the cost of governance. Our total commitment to transparency and accountability in government business is the only credible way to achieve limited to zero corruption. 17. We will enforce the legal framework protecting foreign investors and their indigenous partners. This is the only way to tamper monopoly and capital flight. 18. As governor of Anambra State, my administration achieved close to a 60 to 40 gender balance in appointive and elective positions. The national target has hovered around 30 to 35 percent. We intend to progressively aim for between 35 to 40 percent with aggressive gender mainstreaming action plan and rigid benchmarks. 19. As part of our monetary policy, we will seek to re-establish the independence of the CBN and commit to a credible and transparent plan to normalize the exchange rate and bring inflation to single digits. We will remove import and forex restrictions and insist on a single forex market. The current system penalizes exporters who bring in forex by forcing them to sell at a rate that they are unable to source for forex when they need to purchase forex. This multiple exchange rate regime encourages capital flight and deters investment, which has further worsened Nigeria's forex situation. According to an article posted on Yahoo News on today, October 11, 2022, Peter Obi was described as a wealthy businessman with a reputation for being frugal. Peter Obi has emerged as a powerful force ahead of Nigeria's presidential election next February, energizing voters with messages of prudence and accountability that are amplified by an army of social media users. In a country that seems to always be on the lookout for a messiah to solve its myriad problems, young social media service supporters have elevated Mr. Obi to sainthood and are backing his largely unknown Labour Party against two septuagenarian political heavyweights. The way he has attracted supporters seems to border on populism, a tag he and his supporters would denounce, but some of his rhetoric might be encouraging that. It's time to take your country back, he often says. This election is the old against the new, he told the BBC. His name is often trending on social media on the back of numerous conversations sparked by his supporters, instantly recognizable from their display picture of his image or the white, red and green logo of his party. These are mostly urban under 30 years who refer to themselves as the coconut head generation because they are strong-willed, independent-minded and contemptuous of older politicians who, they say, have done little for them. Many of them, like Deo Ekondeo from the eastern city of Oweri, were involved in the NSAS protest that forced the disbandment of a notorious police department two years ago and also morphed into calls for better government. Now, they are deploying the same strategies that mobilized hundreds of thousands of young Nigerians and raised millions of naira within weeks for the 60-year-old who they consider an alternative to the two parties that have dominated politics since the end of military rule in 1999. Which Nigerian politician has ever held office and has his integrity intact? I do not see any other logical option for young people in Nigeria, said Mr. Ikondeo. He has already been involved in a match for Mr. Obi and is providing logistics and mobilizing students for the campaign as he did during the NSAS protest.